I almost never do videos about straight up illustration. Why? I'll tell you why. It sucks. I was gonna make posters for you guys for Valentine's Day, but shock upon shocker, I struggled while drawing something again. I was able to conquer my demons. We're just a little late. But who doesn't love a little love core in the spring? It's fine. Howdy, hey, I'm Ray, and I was approached by Streamily with the idea to make exclusive prints for a live streamed signing event. That sounded fun and new and exciting, and I don't get a lot of opportunities to draw full art pieces. I really loved the idea of emulating those illustrations I used to see between chapters in Magical Girl manga where all the characters are dressed up in special unique outfits. Like hee hee, what if I did that with my Magical Girls? Let's start off with, I am an ambitious person. Too much sometimes, most times. So I went into this wanting to do two different prism prints that both follow the love core theme. One with everyone in their civilian forms and cute seasonal outfits, and one where they have very special Valentine's Day themed magical soldier transformations. That's already drawing 10 characters across both pieces, but I also wanted to include Neneko because her fashion is probably the most fun out of all of them and I love her so much. That would bring us to 12 characters. That's already a lot of work. And if I do a first and second draft, that's 24 drawings right there. And then drawing the actual posters would make it 36, plus backgrounds this time, absolutely not. Unfortunately, I simply do not have that kind of time. So I took this opportunity to try something a little different. I made a bunch of mood boards with all my ideas for all 12 designs, but I asked my team to do all the initial drafts. This way I could use most of my time to focus on trying to make the best posters I could, and I'd just do the final draft designs as I was drawing. How hard could that be? I love group projects. This sounded fun and much more easy breezy beautiful cover girl. And as usual, after all the first draft designs were claimed, my team killed it. As if they could do anything but. Kaden did the civilian designs for Neneko, Katsumi, and Yu. Kat looks exactly how I imagined her. Neneko has this giant worm on a string named the Love Doctor. And Yu has this darling little frosted animal cracker purse that makes me fucking miserable because it's not real. Wisp did the civilian designs for Emmy and Izumi, and they both look amazing. I love all the hearts he snuck into Izumi's hair and Emmy's sporty backwards hat and useless fun glasses. And Robin did the civilian design for Hokuto. She's got this really cozy knitted sweater that's got gold detailing and some 3D roses that Hokuto can fidget with. Love it, love it. Then for the new transformation designs, Skitty did this fantastic take of Katsumi with a Cupid theme that manages to embody Kat's original hair, but changes the cat ear buns and braid tail to angel wings and heart braids. Robin did this sick heartbreaker theme for Neneko that's so punk rock. The broken heart pigtails are a stroke of goddamn genius, and the strappy fluffy cropped jacket is delightfully Neneko core. Fire did Emmy with a chocolate theme and made them like a little chocolate prince, what a king. I love the slingshot weapon idea. He also did Hokuto with a rose by any other name theme with many multiple drafts and they're all so good, I have no idea how to pick a favorite. Lemon did five drafts of Izumi with an Aphrodite theme with some alternate color palettes. Neither Lemon nor Izumi can stop serving cunt. Lemon, you spoil me. And then Wisp did you with a teddy bear theme. She's adorable and she's got a beehive honey gun for the weapon because she has the right to bear arms. She's so cute. All of these drafts are amazing and a lot of them really don't need many changes. Mostly just adapting them to my design style. Stuff like simplifying and consolidating the clothing detail and adjusting some colors and shapes. And since they're all meant to be viewed on their specific posters, I'll adjust whatever details I need to make the fun stuff the most visible. I wanted to plan these posters out carefully, so I started out with a lot of thumbnails. I first sketched out four different ideas for compositions, and then I took them one at a time and refilled my canvas, testing out different executions for each idea. I wanted very badly to practice my composition with these, so I was going crazy with the perspectives and trying to use the rule of thirds, which was extra hard at the time because I thought the posters had to be a lot more squarish, which I'm not used to. But I found out well after the thumbnails were done that 11 by 17 was an option, and when I tell you, I swapped to that so fast. I did a lot more thumbnails for the civilian poster than I did for the transformed one, partially because I felt plenty warmed up by all the thumbnails I had already done, but also I just knew what I wanted, which was one of those pieces where there's no real background and everyone's just floating and posing. All in all, I'd made about 20 thumbnails, and I went to ask for my friend's feedback and think them over a little bit myself. We picked these two as our favorites, just making the transformed one horizontal instead of vertical. And thumbnailing is such a good practice to partake in, it really is. But I think these lulled me into a full sense of security because once I started sketching, the whole operation started falling apart real fast. 
I knew the civilian poster of everyone dicking around in a Valentine's Day themed grocery store aisle was going to be a challenge because it was going to be background and prop heavy. Those two things certainly are not my specialties, but good god. I can't visualize things in my head well. It might be aphantasia, I don't know. But once I realized I didn't remember what the normal height ratio was between the store aisles, people, and shopping carts, it was a chain reaction. How tall are these things? How tall are those guys? How tall are my guys? This perspective's pretty intense. How does that change everyone's height? And how do I place someone next to the aisle and make them look normal? Am I using this ruler right? Can you even see everyone's outfits with this layout? Why don't I just fucking learn Blender already so I can make my own references? It was not a joyous experience. I even tried picking a different thumbnail, but it still wasn't going well. The grocery store was pissing me right off at this point, so I put it down and decided to start on the transformed poster while I considered my options for the civilian one. I needed a win here. I needed to draw something that would be easier and make me feel like I still knew what I was doing. It was not easier. I did not feel like I knew what I was doing. We'll come back to that though. For now, a quick word from our sponsor, Unveil. A home for your characters and all their story details. Like a little display case, a cozy little shelf for all your babies to be seen and marveled at by other people. Each character entry has a space for you to write something about them, but if you're like me and you get a little intimidated when you see a big empty text box, they have a section of traits that you can just fill out. And a gallery to show them off. There's a dedicated space on each image to credit, so whenever you draw something, get a commission, or some gift art of your special little guy, you can link back to the artist profile super easy. I like posting doodles in my galleries, things like concept sketches. I don't really make finished pieces for myself much anymore, but here's where I would put them, if I had time. Bonus, say that some of your characters happen to come from the same place. Unveil has a built-in worlds feature to help you organize them. Write a little blurb in the folder description to give people exploring your page the gist, and voila! It's free to sign up, no referral code needed. And before you worry, trust that your art is safe in Unveil's hands because they have a very strict no AI, never NFT policy. Thank you Unveil for sponsoring, and now back to the video. I mean, it was at first. Easier, that is. For like 20 minutes. See, I just hadn't gotten far enough into the first poster to realize that trying to figure out a composition and a final draft design at the same time would make me want to take a cheese grater to my brain. Because these are Magical Girl designs, they're all so big and busy by nature, and trying to sort out what design aspects to keep and what to alter, well, there are so many of them on the same canvas that's limited in how long it can be because it needs to be a printable poster, and trying to give them all a similar level of importance on the canvas, and making sure all the boisterous elements of the outfit still flow together so the viewer's eye could be guided nicely and the whole piece wouldn't be a cluttered mess, it was a juggling act that I agonized over. And partway through, Clip Studio crashed so hard that my save file vanished into the ether. So I lost all the footage of me figuring out you and Hokuto's designs, which sucks because I think those are some of the most interesting parts. Thank God I had a screenshot of how they turned out so I could just continue with the drawing because if I had to redo all that from memory, I would have started crying. I did end up with the first colored draft that I felt fine with. I mostly just wasn't loving how Kat was looking, but this was good enough to call the first draft complete. I needed to go back and do the first draft from my civilian poster now. The last thing I wanted to do was throw myself into another battle. And I remembered this Chainsaw Man fan art that I did a while back. I was really proud of the amount of characterization that I put into how they ate their meals, like Denji wanting to try every sauce, but wiping everything that got onto his fingers onto his shirt because he's an animal. Power getting carried away with the ketchup and putting her food directly on the table because she's an animal. Aki being, thank God, the only normal bitch here. So let's try something a little more laid back. Everyone enjoying a meal together. And things went so much smoother. Personally, I think character acting is my specialty, so placing and posing everyone around the table was well within my comfort zone. As I did that, I blocked in the main parts of everyone's outfits that I wanted to keep. And then with all the colors blocked in, I was able to adjust the hues of everyone's clothes to make the piece more homogenous and keep any overlapping fabric or accessories from blending in or clashing too much. The last thing to do was to add in all their meals as props, but I was exhausted and antsy at this point, so I wrote up my ideas and I thought I'd just add them in as I did the final rendering. I also decided to leave the background for later, leaving me with this as my final first draft. 
It's probably because the process wasn't as difficult, but I felt a lot better about this whole poster making idea after I finished this. These were easily some of the most labor intensive drawings I've done in a while. But because I took so much care in getting my sketches sorted, the rendering process was smooth sailing. There's not much for me to say about it. It went well, so I'll let the footage speak for itself. Leo, roll the music. exactly how long it took me to draw these, but Clip Studio's time-lapse footage for the civilian poster alone was 22 minutes. So, you know, long. So long that even though I was having a lot more fun and loving how these looked, by the end, the final designs had some details omitted because they just needed to be done. All except for civilian Hokuto missing her gray hairs. That was an accident I didn't notice until too late. Uh, <laughs> whoops. Guess girly pop's just feeling a lot better. Those hairs receded back into her skull. These are the final poster designs. It may have been a struggle to get here, but I am just chuffed with how they turned out. Like I mentioned, these were made to be sold exclusively for the live stream signing event. It's going to be on my YouTube channel on March 25th, starting at 4 p.m. Central Time. You can order one now on the Streamly website, which will be linked down below, and even request how you want me to sign it and everything. Some people who have already ordered one have requested doodles. I think that's super cute. This would be an amazing way to support the channel and my team if that's something you're interested in. Or if you like options, we've recently partnered with Gamersups. Their main product is an energy formula that delivers long-lasting energy at a fraction of the cost of canned energy drinks, but they're also known for selling their sexy waifu cups and taking absolutely fucking nothing seriously. With the code ACTUALLYRAY at checkout, you can get 10% off your order. Why not get your hands on a waifu cup and some titty milk to drink out of it? Yup, you heard that right, that's a real flavor. Of course, if that's not your thing, we'll always have Patreon. $2 a month gets you access to everything I post, like all my works in progress for upcoming videos and projects. $5 a month gets you access to our exclusive monthly live streams where my team and I play games and yell at each other. And $10 a month gets your name at the end of my videos just like this. I'll still read them out loud sometimes, but we're switching to a handwritten format for more regular and shorter videos since there's so many of you beautiful and wonderful and beloved supporters that it's getting unmanageable to add five minutes of names onto every video. Seriously, Thank you guys so much. This is an incredible problem to have. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye!